after thyroidectomy, we will uh, manage and, and measure biochemical levels on, on the patient. And uh, uh, we usually define chronic hypoparathyroidism or, or, or divide it into three parts. So, so first of all, is there a, a, a low calcium level? So hypocalcemia is, is uh, the key. And if there's uh, consistently a, a low calcium level, we will also measure pHs. In our case, we do it uh, all the time together with calcium uh, measurements. And if and if calcium levels are low, uh, pH should increase to to improve the calcium levels. And and if not, then there's an insufficiency in pH to to in increase calcium levels. And we would call that hypoparathyroidism. Just a a low uh, calcium and an insufficient pH level. It could be either low pH or inappropriately normal pH. And then if it continues for a long time, we would say that more than six months, uh, we'll call that a chronic hypoparathyroidism. Um, we must use the chronic term in it in a simple way, uh, it could also, in some cases, be defined as uh, there must be 12 months before you call it chronic, and and that is because there will be a few patients with the gain of function of the parathyroid glands after six months. So the, the term chronic is not really chronic. There could be a few patients that regain some of the parathyroid function even after six months. Um, so so you must use the term just as a, a simple definition to to say well uh, chronic is after six months but but you must know that that could be um, a gain of parathyroid function also even after six months so it, it's just a, a term uh, we'd use to 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 state well now we term it chronic uh, and then we still will measure pH once in a while to see if there's a gain of function As endocrine surgeons, we want to recognize impaired parathyroid function as soon as possible. We know when parathyroid preservation was demanding intraoperatively. In analogy to the recurrent laryngeal nerve where identification and careful preservation of the nerve do not guarantee the function, the identification and careful preservation of parathyroids do not guarantee their function. Early measurement of intact parathyroid hormone helps to identify patients at risk. Low PTH levels at the end of the surgery or in the early post-operative period can predict post-surgical hypoparathyroidism. We consider PTH levels below 10 picograms per ml as low. In our patient management, we do not wait for the clinical symptoms of hypocalcemia. We try to keep our patients symptom-free through early detection of impaired parathyroid function. We proactively initiate therapy with calcium and active vitamin D. We constantly educate our patients, our nursing staff, and our residents. The early therapy of insufficient parathyroid hormone secretion is essential and allows safe discharge of our patients. The interpretation of post-operative PTH kinetics remains controversial. How low is too low? The time and the extent of recovery vary. It ranges from several weeks to several months. In our interdisciplinary team, we adapt the therapy with calcium and active vitamin D according to subjective symptoms and the results of our biochemical monitoring. We follow our patients very closely. In a hospital setting, rounds twice daily are our standard. Prevention of post-operative hypoparathyroidism is one of our main goals when we recommend and perform endocrine neck surgery. It is also an important quality indicator of our work. In our daily practice, our patients often are mostly concerned about the quality of their voice and the potential need of thyroid hormone replacement therapy. As endocrine surgeons, we take these concerns very seriously. 
We want to protect the recurrent laryngeal nerves and the parathyroids. Even well-informed patients and some of our referring physicians are less aware of the importance of parathyroid protection. Patients and referring physicians should carefully select the institution where the surgical intervention is performed. Volume and expertise of the center and the individual surgeon significantly affect the rate of postoperative hypoparathyroidism. Prevention of postoperative hypoparathyroidism begins before we enter the operating room. In discussing the cases in our interdisciplinary team, we create awareness for patients at risk, such, a, such as patient with Graves' disease, combined thyroid and parathyroid surgery or redo surgery, central lymph node dissection in thyroid cancer, and patients with vitamin D deficiency. We discuss the indication for surgery and carefully plan the extent of the individual surgical procedure. We inform our patients about the importance of parathyroid function and the potential consequences of postoperative hypoparathyroidism. During surgery, anatomical expertise, early identification of the parathyroid glands with surgical loops, and meticulous surgical technique help to preserve sufficient and well perfused parathyroid tissue. If we required, we can adapt our surgical strategy using fluorescent imaging or autotransplantation of devascularized or intracapsular parathyroids. As endocrine surgeons, we are aware of the sometimes dramatic impact of permanent hypoparathyroidism on the lives and the well being of our patients. In the operating room, we train our residents in parathyroid awareness. We document our procedures and our follow-up in quality registries.